Hello and welcome back to my true crime channel. Today I'm going to be doing a body language analysis of Michael Barrymore from an interview that he gave with Martin Bashir not long after the tragic death of Stuart Lubbock in the swimming pool of his home. Now I already have a body language assessment analysis video of Michael Barrymore and that is from an interview that he gave with Piers Morgan on Life Stories. That was some years back but it was given quite a long time after the tragic murder of Stuart Lubbock which occurred in March 2001. 20 years have passed since the murder and the body language analysis today that I'm going to give is based on an interview given to Martin Bashir by Barry Moore and it was not long after the death of Stuart Lubbock so I feel that it will be more interesting to analyse because it was not long after the murder and I've also had one of my very kind commenters Will ask me to do the video so I really hope you enjoyed my assessment Will and thank you so much for the comment and the suggestion I really appreciate it and if anybody else has any other suggestions for body language language or statement analysis videos that I could cover or crime cold cases in general I'd really appreciate your suggestions and I'll certainly put them on my list. So I'm not going to go back into all of the gory details of the death of Stuart Lubbock because I have covered the case in general in a few of the uh, videos on my channel but what I will say is that nine people went to Barrymore's house including Barrymore so there were eight other people there was a party on the night of March the 31st 2001 Stuart Lubbock was in attendance of that party and he'd met Barrymore and Barrymore's partner Jonathan Kenny at a nightclub in Essex that night and he'd never met Barrymore before the tragic part of this, or of this, this whole story, is that nine people were in attendance at the party that night, March 31st, 2001, but only eight left. So, the footage that I have of this interview with Bashir, I'm not sure if it's the full footage, but the start of the footage that I have, Barry Moore is confirming to Bashir that him and Kenny, his mate, Jonathan's mate, or wasn't his mate, he was actually his boyfriend, so the fact that... Barrymore decides to use the words mate is already a bit strange. It's like he's distancing himself from Jonathan Kenny, even though they were boyfriends at the time and they were partners. So that to me, the first thing that comes out of Barrymore's mouth is a red flag because I detect deception. He's trying to make Bashir think that Kenny wasn't his boyfriend when really we all know that he was. <laughs> The evening that a man would drown in his swimming pool began like any other Friday night for Michael Barrymore. He went out for a meal, returned to his Essex home, and then headed for a nightclub in Harlow. I just wanted to cheer myself up. So Jonathan was a mate of mine who was with me at the time. I said, we go down there, don't go to a club. I said, all right. So it was just on the spirit again, on the spirit of the moment. I didn't have any intention to go out to the club that night. So the first thing that Barrymore says is that he just wanted to cheer himself up and that Kenny was a friend of his and that they were going out for the night. They hadn't planned on going to a nightclub and that is how the conversation or the interview with Bashir starts. Now, immediately it's strange that Barrymore uh, refers to Kenny as his mate, as they were partners, and from reading Bashir's body language, although I'm sure Bashir tries to keep it in and not let the people he interviews know how he feels about them, but I think even Martin Bashir thought Barrymore was lying when he called Jonathan Kenny his mate, because I'm pretty sure that Bashir would have known that they were partners, not just mates. He then says that they were going to go down, down a club, just on the spare of the moment. The fact that he stutters over the word down seems a bit strange because if we were just going to go down the club, you just say it. Why did he stutter? As we go through this analysis, you're going to notice that there are a lot of filler words, a lot of ums, a lot of ahs, a lot of oohs, mm, just generally stalling for time, Barrymore using filler words to give himself a bit more thinking time, potentially, in my humble opinion, for the next lie that's going to come out of his mouth. He then follows that up by saying that he didn't have any intention of going to the club that night and that it was just a spare of the moment thing. Now, perhaps it was a spare of the moment thing. I think him and Jonathan Kenny may have gone out for a meal or something in their local town where they lived or in Essex, the local area where Barrymore lived. That ended up with them going to a nightclub and it was spare of the moment, but I'm not sure that it was spare of the moment. Maybe it was planned because it seems strange that Barrymore needs to get out the point that it was a spare of the moment thing. Why would you need to say that? Does he want to convince Bashir and the public that he didn't go clubbing very often? Or that doesn't sit well with me, but I can't quite work out what's wrong with that statement. Just that it doesn't add up and there wasn't any need to say that it was a spare of the moment thing. I just wanted to cheer myself up. 
So Jonathan was a mate of mine who was with me at the time. I said, do we go down there? Don't, don't go to a club. I said, all right. So it was just on the spirit again, on the spirit of the moment. I didn't have any intention to go out to the club that night. So you decide to go to the Millennium Club and you, and you go with your friend John, yeah. John Kenny. Bashir then responds to Barrymore, your friend, your friend Jonathan Kenny, and Barrymore sort of makes a grunt that I think is meant to be a yes. So even there, Bashir is sort of confirming with Barrymore, your friend Kenny, yes, yes, not you're not going to say he was your boyfriend, and Barrymore doesn't. He just continues on with the friend ploy. So you decide to go to the Millennium Club, and you and you go with your friend John, yeah. John Kenny. What happened when you got to the club? I got to the club, I walked in the door, and the management and that uh, looked after me straight away. And they put a security car with me, and a couple, and uh, keep an eye on me. So Bashir then says, you decide to go to the Manelian nightclub, and Barrymore says yes, and that they go in, and that the security makes sure that he's well looked after. Here, I almost find Barrymore boasting about his celebrity status. There were so many girls and men coming up to him. They had to get him a couple of security guards just to look after him because he was such a big star. And to be fair, he was very famous in England during that time in 2001 and in the 90s especially. So yes, he was a big star, but I almost feel like he's kind of boasting about his celebrity status when he talks about his treatment in the club and how they made sure that he was looked after None of it's necessary. None of it tells the story of what happened to Stuart. We didn't really need to know how well or not well Barrymore was looked after by the staff at the Millennium Nightclub, but yet he feels the need to tell us, which is a bit weird. To me, he's just chatting a load of old crap that's not relevant. Basher didn't even ask him about how he was treated in the club, just that you go to the club and he obviously wants to know what happened in the club, but I don't think... It was to do with how well he was looked after. It was probably asking, you know, did you meet anybody and did anybody come back to your house after? That kind of thing. So, again, he's talking a load of old crap, in my opinion, trying to distract Bashir and perhaps give himself a bit more thinking time for Bashir's next question. So you decide to go to the Millennium Club and you, and you go with your friend John, yeah. John Kenny. What happened when you got to the club? I got to the club, I walked in the door, and the management and that uh, looked after me straight away. And they put a security car with me, and a couple, uh, keep an eye on me. The club was busy. I was high, and it was a good buzz. And I had loads of girls coming up to me, and I was talking to loads of uh, the blokes coming up and talking to me. And I just talked to, well, it seemed like hundreds. Uh, and it, 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 it was getting, you know, quite heavy because there was a lot of, not heavy as in there, but heavy and as it was getting a lot to deal with. Bit of an event. Yeah, and I thought, oh, maybe it's a bit too much, you know, and all the drink and that. Barry Moore then goes on to admit that he was high and that it was a good buzz that night and clearly admits to Bashir that he was taking drugs that night. Bashir hadn't even asked him at this point if drugs had been taken by himself that night. So at least here he is showing some integrity and honesty by offering up the fact that he had taken drugs that night and that he was high. He then says, as I said before, that he has loads of people coming up to him, hundreds of men, hundreds of women. It was getting a bit intense, a bit overwhelming. And, you know, I think he was quite glad that he had the two security guards with him. And again, just trying to make it seem like, poor me, give me some sympathy. I went to a nightclub and I had loads of people come up to me and it was a bit overwhelming and I couldn't cope. So kind of playing the emotion card, or not the emotion card, the sympathy card, sorry, trying to make Bashir feel sorry for him, which with an interviewer like Bashir was a big mistake and Barrymore shouldn't have bothered because let's face it, Bashir really didn't feel sorry for him from the impression that I got. Bashir then insinuates it was a bit of an event, as in all these people coming up to you. And Barrymore sort of says again, it was overwhelming. He wasn't sure it was a good idea and that perhaps he was starting to regret choosing to go to the nightclub on that fateful night in March 2001. And, you know, quite heavy because it was a lot of, not heavy as in there, but heavy and as it was getting a lot to deal with. Bit of an event. Yeah, and I thought, oh, maybe it's a bit too much, you know and all the drink and that, and I talked to loads of people. Barrymore left the club with 31-year-old Stuart Lubbock, a local butcher and father of two young children. Also with him was Justin Merritt, a dustman, and his friend John Kenny. 
In total, nine people went to Barrymore's home. Bashir then asks Michael Barrymore had he taken any drugs during that day, and he says no, not during the day, not during the evening. Goes on to say that it was only later in the night and that it was only smoke, as in, I presume, marijuana, and that he hadn't taken any hard drugs. That is what he wants Bashir to believe. Whether that's true, I'm not sure, although I do believe that potentially he was doing other drugs, as it was proven that cocaine was in the house that night, as traces of cocaine were found in the house after Stuart's body had been found. Had you taken any drugs that evening or during the day? No, not during the day or that evening. So you, you'd only been drinking? Yeah, I've been drinking. I drank uh, Jack Daniels and lemonade at the club. Bashir then says to Barrymore, so you'd only been drinking? And then he says, yes, I'd only been drinking JD. And then we all go back to the house, as in Michael Barrymore's house in Royden in Essex. So you, you'd only been drinking? Yeah, I've been drinking. I drank uh, Jack Daniels and lemonade at the club. And then we went back to the... Um, to the house. Bashir then goes on to say that the taxi driver that took Michael Barrymore home went on to say that out of everyone in the car that night, Barrymore was the worst for wear. And Bashir asks Barrymore, does he agree with that? <laughs> At this point, watch it very closely. Contempt flashes across Barrymore's mouth. His eyes widen and he looks really pissed off. He looks annoyed. He looks full of contempt. He looks fuming that Bashir's mentioned that. And he tries to make out that this is the first he's heard of it and that he didn't know that. And something that I'm not sure is ever mentioned in this Bashir interview, unless it's been cut out, is that it's highly known and, and regarded that the taxi driver reported that not only was Barry Moore the most drunk and off his face in the taxi that night on the way back to his house with the other people from the nightclub, it was believed that Stuart Lubbock was in the car with him in this taxi ride on the way home and Barrymore is meant to say something along the lines of I need a damn good tonight now I'm not going to say what the word was because it's rude it begins with F and it ends in K and I'm sure you can all guess what it was now whether he said that I don't know I'm not making any accusations but the taxi driver claims Barrymore said that which is what has always led people to believe that perhaps he wanted to have sex with Stuart that night. He'd fallen out with the boyfriend, Kenny, earlier in the evening. Maybe that's why they ended up in the nightclub, because Michael Barrymore was out on the pool. I don't know. But he seems really annoyed by the fact that Bashir's put up the taxi driver, and the look on his face says it all. The taxi driver who took you home says, and I quote, you were definitely the worst for wear. Would that be a fair description? I was the worst for wear as me or worse for yes. wear out of everybody else? No, you were just worse for wear yourself. It's the first time I'm hearing this. Huh? Yeah, just the worse for wear yourself. You were quite drunk, I think is what he meant, as he took you home. That's probably acceptable. I, mean, I was I was leaning over the back of his seat talking to him, just jolly enough. It was it was it was a just another night, another club, people come back. Just the sort of thing you did. Have a drink. It's the sort of thing I did, you know. Barry Moore then questions Bashir back on, on the question rather than answering the question. He says, what, I was the worst for wear or out of everybody, the worst for wear? So what do you mean I was the worst for wear is basically what, what he meant. I was the worst for wear as me or worse for yes. wear out of everybody else? No, you were just worse for wear yourself. It's the first time I'm hearing this. Yeah. Bashir then responds to Barry Moore, no, you were the worst for wear is what the taxi driver is meaning, is, is what Bashir insinuates. And Barrymore says, well, this is the first time I'm hearing this. And again, looks really, really pissed off that Bashir's had the cheek, in his opinion, to ask him about that. The taxi driver who took you home says, and I quote, you were definitely the worst for wear. Would that be a fair description? I was the worst for wear as me or worse for yes. wear out of everybody else? No, you were just worse for wear yourself. This is the first time I'm hearing this. Huh? Yeah, just the worse for wear yourself. You were quite drunk, I think is what he meant, as he took you home. That's probably acceptable. I, mean, I was I was leaning over the back of his seat talking to him. Just jolly enough. It was it was it was a just another night, another club, people come back. Just the sort of thing you did. Have a drink. It's the sort of thing I did, you know. Bashir then continues to say to Barry Moore, you know, he was saying that you were worse for wear, you were the most drunk out of everybody, to sort of reassure Barry Moore as to what the taxi driver meant. Barrymore then says, well, yeah, you know, he sort of agrees with it and says that he was leaning over the chair talking to the taxi driver. Perhaps this is the point where he says he really needs a that night. I don't know.
it's not said in the interview with Bashir. Barry more than continues to say it was, it was, and he sort of stutters over them words. It was just a normal night, another night at a club, and the fact that he stutters over the words makes me think he's lying. The fact that he needs to say it was just a normal night, why does he need to insert the word normal to make the interviewer Martin Bashir think it was just another normal night? You know, not the sort of weird, unexpected night where a 31-year-old man's dead body is found in your swimming pool in your back garden. Not one of those nights. No, just a normal night. I don't buy that for a minute. The reason Barrymore uses the word normal is to try and convince Bashir that it wasn't anything out of the ordinary that night. Nothing else sinister happened, just that Stuart died. Just my humble opinion, but that's what I think about that. The taxi driver who took you home says, and I quote, you were definitely the worst for wear. Would that be a fair description? I was the worst for wear as me or worse for yes. wear out of everybody else? No, you were just worse for wear yourself. It's the first time I'm hearing this. So. Yeah, just the worse for wear yourself. You were quite drunk, I think is what he meant, as he took you home. That's probably acceptable. I, mean, I was I was leaning over the back of his seat talking to him, just telling him. It was, it was, it was a, just another night, another club. People come back. Just the sort of thing you did. Have a drink. It's the sort of thing I did. We then move on to Bashir asking Barry more what happened when you get in. He says he shows everybody round. People get drinks and some music is put on. And he sort of leads Martin Bashir to believe that it was just another normal night. A party at his house. Nothing unexpected was going to happen. How wrong was he? Charlie and I. It was, it was, it was a, just another night. Another club. People come back. Just the sort of thing you did. Have a drink. It's the sort of thing I did. Barry Moore then says that the people at the party served themselves drinks. And Bashir questions that. What? You didn't serve them drinks? And he says, oh, no, no. They served themselves drinks. So I think he's trying to put out there, Michael Barrymore, that he didn't ply anybody with alcohol. And if people wanted to have a drink at his party that night, they helped themselves. And that he did not get the guests drinks. I must say, just to, I was going to end there, but I must say, I do believe that to be true. I don't think Michael Barrymore got people drinks because of his celebrity status. I'm aware that he'd had a housekeeper over the years and he probably didn't really want to play the gracious host of giving everybody drinks. If you were at Barrymore's house, clearly with him being such a high status celebrity, you had to get your own drink. I certainly believe that to be true. What happened when you got home? I got home, I went in, I went down, showed them around the place. Not showed them around the place, but you know, there's some music in there in the front room and that, and helped myself to drinks. Um, did you did you serve them drinks? No, I didn't serve them drinks. They helped themselves. You just showed them where the drinks. Yeah, I showed them where the drinks. There's a cabinet in the front room, and there's the fridge and the cooler, uh, and there was uh, plenty of drink around, just to help themselves, and also. Uh, if they wanted to use the jacuzzi, they could. Now, regarding Michael Barrymore's body language so far, I know I've only analysed a couple of minutes of this interview with Bashir so far, but often when he's recalling things, he looks down. Most people, when they're recalling things, look off to the left or look off to the right. So the fact that he looks down is a bit weird to me. Everybody has a different way of recalling memory, um, re recollection, internal dialogue, but... I don't really get that from Barry Moore. I'm not sure why he looks down. That almost leads me to believe that whatever he's saying isn't factually true and he doesn't look left or look right to try and remember it because perhaps what he's saying is a lie. I do notice emotions on his face. I personally don't feel that Michael Barrymore is a psychopath. I do feel he feels emotions. But what I will say is throughout all the interviews I've watched with Barrymore about the death of Stuart Lubbock at his house, I don't feel that he has much sympathy for Stuart or his family. Let's all be honest here, he'd only met Stuart that night, so we can't all expect him to be crying about it 20 years later. But what I do think is that Barrymore does feel emotion, but the majority of the emotion that you see on his face, which often is etched here in between his eyebrows when he sort of looks upset. And I do believe it's genuine upset on his face, but more upset for the loss of his famousness, his celebrity status and his brilliant career than for the death of Stuart, I feel that the emotion where Barrymore is concerned is more for himself than for Stuart Lubbock. But again, just my opinion. Bashir then asks Barrymore, did he think, out of anybody else at the party that night, that anyone else was particularly drunk? As in, because Barrymore was drunk, was anybody else really drunk? Now, out of everybody at the party that night, there were eight other people. Bear in mind, one of these other people is Barrymore's partner, Jonathan Kenny, at the time. They were boyfriends. 
He doesn't decide to mention Jonathan, being that he knew him the, the best out of everybody there. A lot of the people there that night, Barrymore had only met that night, so obviously he doesn't know them very well, but he chooses to say Stuart's name above and beyond everybody else's name to say that Stuart was a little bit drunk. And he sort of says that the others were, you know, a bit drunk, but, you know, nothing out of the ordinary or that no one was off their face is basically what he's saying. But the fact that he chooses to say Stuart and how drunk he was or wasn't that night over everybody else at the party is a bit of a red flag for me. Could it be that it's an innocent thing and because of the fact that Stuart died that night, Barrymore remembers how drunk Stuart was or wasn't over everybody else's behaviour because he was the one that died? That is a possibility, but something's not sitting right with me on that statement. I feel that Barrymore is lying, I'm sorry to say, but... I think maybe Stuart was much more off his face than Barrymore wants to let on. And I also believe that Stuart um, potentially took hard drugs at Barrymore's house. And I also feel that throughout the interview, he tries to conceal that because he doesn't want the public thinking that he gave drugs to people at his house that night. Again, just my opinion. Were any of the people who you saw in your house, admittedly you say you didn't know them, but did they appear to be drunk? Mm, Stuart um, has had a drink, they had all had a drink, but nothing, nothing, uh, nothing other judges uh, so drunk that they, you know, they had to be taken care of. Or... Barrymore follows that up by saying that no one was so drunk that they had to be taken care of. Now, that's a weird thing to say. Just no one was off their face. No one was that drunk. The fact that he has to say no one was so drunk that they needed to be taken care of leads me to believe that he wants Bashir to think that Lubbock and everybody else at the party that night was com completely fine. None of them were so drunk they needed help. In other words, Lubbock, Stuart Lubbock, couldn't have been so pissed and drunk that he fell in the pool and drowned. He's trying to get it out that he has no culpability here. He's not responsible for anything to do with Stuart's death. He didn't ply him with alcohol or drugs and that he was just a bit drunk. So he definitely wants to make quite the point here to Bashir that no one, including Stuart Lubbock, was that pissed or off their face on drugs at his party that night. Did anybody take any drugs? I took some drugs with a, a couple of them. What, what sort of drugs? Smoke. Bashir then asks Barrymore, did you give anybody drugs that night? Barrymore responds, no. And again, another denial, no, not at all. Now... Personally, I don't fully detect deception here, but it's not a great denial. The fact he has to say it twice, it wasn't just no, move on, ask me another question. He had to follow it on with no, not at all, which sort of is the sort of language liars use to try and convince the interviewer or person asking the questions of their innocent. So to be honest, that really doesn't sit well with me and is quite a big, as we all say here, red flag. Red flags are flying. Did you offer cocaine to anybody? No. You didn't? No, not at all. Now Bashir says that there are two accounts of what happened that night and that the two accounts appear to tally. When this is said, Barrymore looks pretty annoyed again. I see contempt flashing across his mouth, his eyes widen, and again he shoots daggers, dirty looks at Bashir, because he's really not happy that Bashir's just asked that question or made that statement. You, I'm sure you'll be aware that mm. there are now effectively two descriptions of what happened on that night, and both of them appear to tally. Um, well, what descriptions are there? Justin Merritt, for example, has said that you offered cocaine to all of the people in the kitchen. Yeah. And he says that you dabbed your finger in cocaine and forcibly rubbed it on Stuart Lubbock's gum. Oh, just to say, I should have put this before the last segment, when Bashir asks him if he gave anybody any drugs that night, before the denial of no and not at all, Barrymore actually also says that he did do some drugs that night, him and a couple of the other people at the party, and that it was smoke 
as in marijuana. So he does admit to drug use at his house that night, that marijuana was in the house, that he smoked it, and a couple of other people did. But then when Bashir insinuates, did you give anybody any drugs? He outright denies no, and no, not at all. You, I'm sure you'll be aware that there are now effectively two descriptions of what happened on that night, and both of them appear to tally. Um, well, what descriptions are there? Well, Justin Merritt, for example, has said that you offered cocaine to all of the people in the kitchen. Yeah. And he says that you dabbed your finger in cocaine and forcibly rubbed it on Stuart Lubbock's gun mm. in that the kitchen. A place. The only time I had anything was with a couple of guys down the other end of the house. And at that time, they all went out to the pool. So, going back to Bashir saying to Barrymore about the two descriptions of the night and the fact that the two tally, Barrymore follows that up by saying, what descriptions are they then? And, like I said, he looks really annoyed, he looks really pissed off, actually quite fuming that Bashir's even had the cheek to ask the question. His eyes sort of raced from side to side a little bit, and it's almost as if he's trying to think, oh my God, what does he know, and what's he got on me here, and oh... He looks really like he's shitting himself and thinking, crap, what has Bashir got on me here? You, I'm sure you'll be aware that there are now effectively two descriptions of what happened on that night. And both of them appear to tally. So the question Bashir asks Barrymore isn't just did you give drugs to anyone, it was specifically did you give cocaine to anybody that night? Barrymore outright denies it and says no, no, not at all. But, as I said, does quite clearly admit to the fact that marijuana was being smoked and that he had smoked some that night. Um, well, what descriptions are there? Well, Justin Merritt, for example, has said that you offered cocaine to all of the people in the kitchen. Yeah. And he says that you dabbed your finger in cocaine and forcibly rubbed it on Stuart Lubbock's gum. In that the had kitchen. a good place. The only time I had anything was with a couple of guys down the other end of the house. And at that time, they all went out to the pool. Bashir then says that Justin Merritt claims that Barrymore offered cocaine to everybody at the party that night. Now, when that happens, the minute the name is said, Justin Merritt, Barrymore looks up to the left, just for a split second, and looks up almost as if recalling a memory. Now, as I said before, when we've seen him apparently recalling a memory, he looks down. Personally, I don't think that's a behaviour of Barrymore. I think he's lying on the times where you spot him looking down. But when he looks up to the left, I do believe that he was trying to remember events that happened that night. And he looks genuinely shocked and weirded out that this is even being mentioned, that he could have possibly given cocaine to anyone that night. And he looks, again, really quite annoyed that Bashir was asking the question, and it's kind of weird that he looked annoyed, because what did he expect from Martin Bashir, who at the time was one of the best interviewers in the country? So is Justin Merritt lying when he says that that was what you did and he saw you do it? Is he lying? Yes. Yes, he is. He's lying? Yes. So Bashir then goes on to say that Justin Merritt claims that Barrymore went on not only to offer cocaine to everybody at the party, but to rub cocaine forcibly in Stuart Lubbock's gums, and that Stuart Lubbock clearly didn't want that to happen and sort of looked a bit disgusted by it all. Barrymore then clearly denies that, but does admit that maybe he might put cocaine in his own gums, but that he certainly would not put cocaine in anybody else's gums. Even though on a previous occasion, on a previous occasion, John Kerry recollects you doing exactly that thing, getting cocaine, dabbing it on your finger and rubbing it in your gums. The two don't tie in. Well, they tie um, in as something that you might do. Something I might do, mm. not to another person. It's something that John Kenny saw you do to yourself. Yeah, you're saying that it's that on occasion. Yeah, and what I'm saying to you is... It's not know, something I recall ever doing. It. No, sure, to be clear... Yeah, I'm clear about what you're saying. Right. Yeah, I'm very clear. You are saying that Justin Merritt is lying. He is lying. 
But before those denials, Barrymore says, no, well, the only time I took anything was down the other end of the house with a couple of guys. As in, he only smoked a bit of marijuana down the end of the house with a couple of guys. There was no cocaine offering, no cocaine being put in Lubbock's mouth. But to start with, the denial isn't an outright, no, I didn't. No, I did not offer cocaine. No, I did not put cocaine in Stuart Lubbock's mouth. That's rubbish. It's lies. He sort of sidetracks, tells a little bullshit story before making his denial, which leads me to believe that that may have happened and that he's lying again. Even though on a previous occasion, on a previous occasion, John Kerry recollects you doing exactly that thing, getting cocaine, dabbing it on your finger and rubbing it in your gums. The two don't tie in. Well, they tie and in as something that you might do. Something I might do, mm. not to another person. It's something that John Kenny saw you do to yourself. Yeah, you're saying that it's that on an occasion. Yeah, and what I'm saying to you is... It's not something I recall ever doing. No, sure, to be clear. Yeah, I'm clear about what you're saying. So, Basher then asked quite an interesting question. So is Justin Merritt lying when he says that you did this? You offered everybody cocaine, you tried to put cocaine in Stuart Lubbock's gums. <laughs> Barrymore then says, what, is, is Justin Merritt lying? Basher goes, yes. <laughs> and then Barrymore <laughs> says, well, yes, of course he is, pretty much. The fact that Barrymore has to ask Bashir is who lying? Well, clearly, he just asked quite a clear question does that mean that Justin Merritt is lying? Not are you lying? Is anybody else in this big messy situation with a murder lying? Barrymore has to ask who's lying just to be sure that it's Merritt because he's not quite sure if Bash is insinuating that he's lying because obviously he is lying, in my humble opinion, and he's thinking, shit, am I caught out here? I better just check. Who is he actually talking about? Who's lying? Me? Justin? Ooh. And at this point... He really is feeling the pressure from Martin Bashir, who was a fantastic interviewer in his day. Maybe not so much now. He's been a bit disgraced with the whole Diana interview. I don't know if you know all about that. That's just another story, maybe for another day. But anyway, Bashir has really got Barry Moore's number in this interview, and he's got him a good one. He really has. So is Justin Merritt lying when he says that that was what you did and he saw you do it? Is he lying? Yes. Yes, he is. He's lying? Yes. So Bashir then sort of says, you know, are you sure that, that this could be that Justin Merritt was lying? Because apparently your ex-boyfriend, although he doesn't say ex-boyfriend, but he was the ex-boyfriend, because apparently Jonathan Kenny says that this is something you would do. You would rub cocaine into your gums. And Barrymore kind of then says, well, not to someone else. N no. And sort of says, well, it might be something that I do, as in to myself, but wants Bashir and everyone to believe that it's not something that he'd do to someone else. Now, obviously, I'm not making any accusations here. Whether Barry Moore would want to put um, cocaine in someone else's gums, I don't know. I'd like to think not, unless that person had given their consent for him to do that. But this whole did he, didn't he, was there cocaine, wasn't there? There obviously was cocaine because traces of cocaine were found in the house by the police. But whether Barry Moore puts it on his gums or likes to put it on other people's gums, none of us will ever know. It could just be hearsay. But when Jonathan Kenny's name is mentioned in this part, again, Barry Moore looks really upset and annoyed. He looks up again as if trying to, to try and remember the events of the evening. And again, looks really pissed off that Martin has asked such an annoying question for him. Did anybody take any drugs? I took some drugs with a, a couple of them. What, what sort of drugs? Smoke. Did you offer cocaine to anybody? No. You didn't? No, not at all. You, I'm sure you'll be aware mm. that there are now effectively two descriptions of what happened on that night, and both of them appear to tally. Um, well, what descriptions are there? Well, Justin Merritt, for example has said that you offered cocaine to all of the people in the kitchen. Yeah. And he says that you dabbed your finger in cocaine and forcibly rubbed it on Stuart Lubbock's gum mm. in that the had kitchen. A good place. The only time I had anything was with a couple of guys down the other end of the house. And at that time, they all went out to the pool. So is... Justin Merritt lying when he says that that was what you did and he saw you do it. 
Is he lying? Yes. Yes, he is. He's lying. Yes. Even though on a previous occasion, on a previous mm-hmm. occasion, John Kerry recollects you doing exactly that thing, getting cocaine, dabbing it on your finger and rubbing it in your gums. The two don't tie in. Well, they tie and in as something that you might do. Something I might do, mm. not to another person. It's something that John Kenny saw you do to yourself. Yeah, you're saying that Privates. he did that on an occasion. Yeah, and what I'm saying to you is... It's not know, something I recall ever doing. No, sure, to be clear. Yeah, I'm clear about what you're saying. Right. Yeah, I'm very clear. Another one of Barrymore's denials to that question is it's not something I recall doing. Now, the word recall, big red flags. Flags are flying, flying. Sorry for my bad singing. Really bad red flag, that. Most people, when they're telling the truth, don't say, I don't recall doing that. If it was a truthful statement, I don't remember ever doing that. I don't remember doing that. Not recall. Recall is quite a strange word. Often, I'm not saying all the time, but often and a lot of the time when people choose to use the word recall... It's because they don't want to make an outright denial. But if they say, well, I don't recall it happening, then obviously it probably didn't happen. It's because they don't want to make an outright denial. And that recall word for me there means he's lying, in my opinion. And again, it's another red flag flying. It's something that John Kenny saw you do to yourself. Yeah, you're saying that it's about an occasion. Yeah, and what I'm saying to you is... It's not know, something I recall ever doing. It. No, sure, to be clear. Yeah, I'm clear about what you're saying. Right. Yeah, I'm very clear. Now, just going back to that previous bit where he says, Bashir, to Barrymore, well, it's something John Kenny remembers you doing. He sort of signals the, the gesture of putting cocaine in someone's mouth by doing that. And Barrymore, initially, the first word that comes out of his mouth is, yeah... And then not long after comes the but I don't recall. So basically, when he says, so Jonathan Kenny says that it was something that you would do to yourself, rub cocaine in your gums, and he goes, yeah. So basically, in my opinion, agrees there that he has done that before. He has rubbed cocaine in his own gums, but he's trying to make an outright denial that he's never done it to anybody else. And personally, as Justin Merritt and Jonathan Kenny both say that he did, okay, they could be lying. Maybe they killed Stuart and they're trying to set up and frame Barrymore for it. But the fact that it's come from two different people and that Barrymore pretty much there does admit to doing it to himself leads me to believe that he may, may, in my humble opinion, have rubbed cocaine into poor, tragic Stuart Lovett's gums that night in March 2001. It's something that John Kenny saw you do to yourself. Yeah, you're saying that it's about an occasion. Yeah, and what I'm saying to you is... It's not something I recall ever doing. So after the part where Barrymore says, I don't recall ever doing that to anybody else, Martin sort of butts in and says, well, to to be clear, and before he can finish... (laughs) Barrymore looks the most pissed off he looks throughout the whole interview. Check out his face in this particular point because he is fuming, absolutely fuming. It's something that John Kenny saw you do to yourself. Yeah, you're saying that it's about an occasion. Yeah, and what I'm saying to you is... It's not something I recall ever doing. No, sure, to be clear. Yeah, I'm clear about what you're saying. Right. Yeah, very clear. Barrymore then butts in and says, I'm clear about what you're saying. I'm very clear. And he looks fuming. He keeps eye contact directly with Bashir during this point. And I think he's trying to convey to Bashir just how much Bashir has really, really pissed him off. And that he, he he's clear with what he's saying. He's very clear. And at this point, I think Barrymore thinks Bashir suspects he has some involvement in Stuart Lubbock's death. I think he realises he's not won over Martin Bashir and that the interview's not going to go his way. And at this point, you can see the anger bubbling up in Barrymore, which is quite concerning because he always played the persona of the happy-go-lucky family man that all the kids loved and he was so funny, the big comedian. Well, maybe deep down in amongst that persona is a really angry man. And that is what I see in this part of the video. It's quite disturbing to watch. It's something that John Kenny saw you do to yourself. Yeah, you're saying that it's about an occasion. Yeah, and what I'm saying to you is... It's not something I recall ever doing. No, sure, to be clear. Yeah, I'm clear about what you're saying. Right. Yeah, I'm very clear. So Bashir says again, so you are saying that Justin Merritt is lying. And Barrymore follows up immediately without any hesitation with... Yes, 
he's lying. Now, maybe he is lying. Maybe Barrymore never put cocaine into the gums of Stuart Lubbock that night. Maybe it is all lies. Maybe someone's trying to set him up. Maybe other people at the party that night carried out the murder. And Barrymore may have had no involvement at all. We weren't there. We don't know. We can only make assumptions from body language and statement analysis. I do detect deception throughout this interview. Michael's body language is quite strange. You do see expressions, micro expressions of hatefulness and annoyance and contempt on his face. He clearly isn't comfortable to do the interview, but I'm guessing his management probably suggested it. And I imagine if Michael Barrymore had had his own way, he never would have done the interview with Bashir in the first place. Did you offer cocaine to anybody? No. You didn't? No, not at all. You, I'm sure you'll be aware mm. that there are now effectively two descriptions of what happened on that night, and both of them appear to tally. Um, well, what descriptions are there? Well, Justin Merritt, for example, has said that you offered cocaine to all of the people in the kitchen. Yeah. And he says that you dabbed your finger in cocaine and forcibly rubbed it on Stuart Lubbock's gum mm. in that the kitchen. A good place. The only time I had anything was with a couple of guys down the other end of the house. And at that time, they all went out to the pool. So is Justin Merritt lying when he says that that was what you did and he saw you do it? Is he lying? Yes. Yes, he is. He's lying? Yes. Now, Bashir goes on to ask quite a long question, but it's basically on the lines of, as you've been good enough to admit that you've used cocaine in the past, friends of yours have kind of said that you've used cocaine. I imagine he's then going to go on and ask, why can't you just admit that there was cocaine in the house that night? Barry Moore again looks quite annoyed by the question and from from pretty much the last couple of minutes onwards the rest of the interview doesn't go very well in my opinion because Barry Moore is quite annoyed with Bashir because he knows Bashir suspects him of something he knows he's not got Bashir on his side he potentially has realized he's never going to get Bashir on his side and the questions have become somewhat harder and more difficult and Barry Moore at this point is really struggling with giving answers at least truthful answers to bash here. You are saying that Justin Merritt is lying. He is lying. Justin Merritt stands by the story he told police. Given the fact that you have been honest enough to admit that you've used cocaine previously mm. and that there are other friends of yours who recollect you buying cocaine and using cocaine, yeah. is it not possible that you had cocaine in the house that evening? It's possible for coke. I mean, a trace of cocaine was found in the house. Is it not possible that you gave cocaine no, to the guests? No, it is impossible. I'm why, actually, why, are you, I, why are you so categoric on that? Because I, actually, for that for that evening, I know the sequence of events. I wasn't so off it that I didn't know what was going on. So the end of that question from Bashir to Barrymore is: Is there any possibility that there could have been coke in the house that you could have given someone coke? And he sort of half agrees and sort of doesn't outright deny it, but before even speaking in response to this question, you can see a visible a visible gulp from Barrymore because he's thinking, oh God, he's asking about the cocaine again and, and he knows that I've admitted to it before. So basically what he's saying is, well, yeah, there could have been cocaine in the house that night. He's not outright denying it. I imagine there was cocaine in the house. It was found. There were traces of it in the house. That doesn't mean it had been used that night. There could have been traces in, of it in Barrymore's home from other occasions. Who knows how often things like that were cleaned up when people have been taking drugs at parties at his house or, or just in general at his house, not even at a party. So clearly here uh, he sort of half admits to the fact there could have been cocaine in the house. But again, especially where the hard drugs are concerned, he doesn't feel comfortable talking about it. He seems comfortable to say he smokes a bit of weed, but he doesn't really want the public knowing about his hard drug habit because perhaps that could affect the career a bit more than just smoking a bit of weed. Just my opinion. Justin Merritt stands by the story he told police. Given the fact that you have been honest enough to admit that you've used cocaine previously mm. and that there are other friends of yours who recollect you buying cocaine and using cocaine... Yeah. So the next bit gets quite heated because Bashir says to Barrymore and continues in the vein of the answering about the drug or the questioning, sorry, about the drugs. 
Is it not possible that you gave cocaine to the guests that night? And again, Barrymore is not happy. He doesn't want to let Bashir finish the question and he interjects immediately with his answer. And again, from the look on his face and his body language, which has become really tense by this point, Barrymore is fuming. Is it not possible that you had cocaine in the house that evening? It's possible for coke. I mean, a trace of cocaine was found in the house. Is it not possible that you gave cocaine no, to the guests? No, it isn't possible. I'm why, actually, why, I, why are you so categoric on that? Because I, actually, for that for that evening, I know the sequence of events. I wasn't so off it that I didn't know what was going on. So Barrymore responds, no, it isn't possible to Bashir. As in, no, it isn't possible that I gave drugs to anybody that night. Barrymore tries to continue. Again, he's looking really annoyed. Bashir looks a bit uncomfortable as well. And Bashir interjects and butts in again so that Barrymore can't finish answering the question. Is it not possible that you gave cocaine no, to it the isn't guests? possible. I'm quite, why, I'm actually, why, I, why are you so categoric on that? Because I, actually, for that, for that evening, I know the sequence of events. I wasn't so off it that I didn't know what was going on. So Bashir manages to butt in and says, why are you so categorically certain on that, the fact that you didn't give anybody drugs that night? Barrymore then answers immediately with, well, he remembers the sequence of events from that night. Why, why, actually, I, why are you so categorical on that? Because I, actually, for that, for that evening, I know the sequence of events. I wasn't so off it that I didn't know what was going on. So, going back to Barrymore's last statement, where he talks about the sequence of events, he actually says the word actually at the start of that. Not always, but that is often a red flag where liars are trying to convince someone, well, actually, I remember the sequence of events that night. Now, this interview was filmed not long after the murder. It's not 20 years later or 15 years later, like some of the Piers Morgan interviews that have been given where memories can fade. So really, his memory should be pretty fresh here of the murder or death of Stuart, even if he had nothing to do with it. The fact of finding Stuart's dead body floating in his pool must have been horrific, especially if he had nothing to do with the murder. So the memories are still very fresh for him here. You can often see him looking up and, and thinking things through when he's asked this question. Um, but I find it weird that he needed to use the word actually and not, you know, just say what he needed to say. Why did he have to insert actually at the start? And if you listen back to that statement again, he stammers and stutters over the first few words which again leads me to believe that he's lying. Why he can't just say what he needs to say, and especially as he's not having to think back 20 or 15 years, this is something that happened very recent when the interview's given. So really, he shouldn't have to struggle to remember things. They should be in his brain and still be quite fresh because of the traumatic, the traumaticness of what happened to Stuart. All of these things really should still be very fresh, very, very fresh in Barrymore's mind, and he should re recall, as he likes to say, recall, he should remember everything quite clearly without having to take long pauses to recall things or remember things that he constantly does throughout the interview with Bashir. So, again, I'm noticing a lot of deception. I'm noting, noticing a lot of defensive body language from um, Barrymore to Bashir. Barrymore clearly realises quite early on that Bash has got his number, that he doesn't believe him, and that puts him on the defensive from almost the first few minutes of the interview. Why, why, actually, I, why are you so categoric on that? Because, I, actually, for that, for that evening, I know the sequence of events. I wasn't so off it that I didn't know what was going on. So, Barrymore's response to that question is quite interesting, and from here on in, his responses get quite long, so I'm going to start analysing them in a bit more depth for you guys, and I want to read them out so that I get them word perfect. So, his response to that goes as follows. I wasn't so off it that I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't so out of my head that I didn't know what was going on. So there he feels the need to repeat himself, just with slightly different wording to emphasise the point of he wasn't so drunk or off his face on drugs that he didn't know what was going on. He needs to emphasise it twice. So we'll say that again. I wasn't so off it that I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't so out of my head that I didn't know what was going on. I came into the house, should them where everything was, or showed them where everything was, although it didn't sound very well, went down the other end, smoked with the lads, came back, went to the jacuzzi, and that was when I discovered, and then there's a slight pause, Stuart. 
And then the last part of that statement is, the last time I saw Stuart, he was walking towards the jacuzzi. Now note the jacuzzi is mentioned twice there. I believe that a number of people from the party ended up in the jacuzzi. Stuart was one of them. Barrymore never really fully admits to being in the jacuzzi, but he does say in this interview that he changed into shorts and that everybody was going to go in the jacuzzi. Whether Barrymore actually did go in the jacuzzi is not really known, but the fact that he needs to mention the jacuzzi twice to me here makes me wonder, is there some relevance to that? Did Stuart die in the jacuzzi? Is Barrymore aware of that? And that's why that's been mentioned twice, because there wasn't really any need to mention the jacuzzi twice. You could have just said the last time I saw Stuart, he was in the back garden. You didn't really need to say jacuzzi. So that doesn't sit very well with me. It's raising a slight red flag, to be honest with you guys, that perhaps Stuart died in the jacuzzi. Barrymore's got guilty knowledge of that, and it's slipping out here in this statement. Is it not possible that you gave cocaine no, to the guests? Why, why, I... why are you so categoric on that? Because I, actually, for that for that evening, I know the sequence of events. I wasn't so off it that I didn't know what was going on. I, I, I wasn't so out of my head that I didn't know what was going on. Came into the house, showed them where everything was, went down the other end, had a smoke with the lads, came back, went to go up the jacuzzi, and that's when I discovered Stuart. So, as I've said, the questions do get more in-depth now, and Barrymore gives slightly longer answers, sorry, so I want to go through them properly and make sure that I get them right. So, the next question asked by Bashir to Barrymore is, so, what happened that caused to raise the alarm? Can you take me through the sequence of events? Barrymore says, we had a smoke down there. We went there for a while, not that long. He doesn't say where, presumably the back garden. Um, we agreed we'd go to the jacuzzi. Again, the jacuzzi's being mentioned. Give it a go. Give what a go? Going in the jacuzzi? Uh, went down to the corner, end of the house. Um, I gave them some sort. They changed. Sorry, some shorts. Not sort. Some shorts. They changed. I changed into a pair of shorts. Walked out to the pool, towards the jacuzzi. Everybody was back in the house by then. And I look down, and when he does that, he sort of motions looking down as he says it, for emphasis, to emphasise that he did look down and that it did happen, um, which was effectively the deep end, and Stuart was there. So let's just go back through that one more time. So what happened next that raised the alarm? Can you just take me through the sequence of events? We had a smoke down there. We were there for a while, not that long. Um, we agreed we'd go to the jacuzzi, give it a go. Uh... Went down to the corner, end of the house. Um, I gave them some shorts. They changed. I changed into a pair of shorts. Walked out to the pool, towards the jacuzzi. Everybody was back in the house by then. And I looked down. He looks down as he says this. Which was effectively the deep end and Stuart was there. So just to go back through this quickly, that's quite a long statement from Barry Moore. He gives more information than's needed about changing into the shorts. Again, the jacuzzi's getting mentioned. I suspect he was in the jacuzzi, but perhaps he doesn't want that to be known because he seems to try and try to be withholding something about the jacuzzi. There's definitely something not sitting right with me, and there's a flag fly and a red flag as usual. So he's definitely trying to hold something back about the jacuzzi there. What's this bit where he says... Not that long. Um, we'd agreed we'd go to the jacuzzi. Give it a go. Give what a go? Get in the jacuzzi? People having sex? Who knows? I presume he means going in the jacuzzi. So that's raising some red flags, this statement. And also this bit here where he puts, they changed, I changed, into a pair of shorts. Walked out to the pool towards the jacuzzi. So making it sound as though no one went in the pool. No one was swimming in the pool. We just went out and went to the jacuzzi. Everybody was back in the house by then. So who was walking out towards the jacuzzi? Just Barrymore? To do what? Go for a jacuzzi by himself when everyone was getting changed into shorts? So everyone was getting changed into shorts. Barrymore changes into shorts. He goes out to go and get in the jacuzzi, but no one else is going with him. But they're all getting changed into shorts. So this isn't adding up. It's not making sense to me. Who went in the jacuzzi? It is known that a couple of them admitted to being in there with Stuart Lubbock that night. I believe that it was Justin Merrick 
or Merritt, I've got to get his name right, and Jonathan Kenny that were meant to have been in the jacuzzi that night with Stuart, not Barrymore, but Barrymore changed into short. So why didn't he get in the jacuzzi? Why, when he says that they're all going out to go to the jacuzzi, does he then have to state that everybody was back in the house by them? Also, where that's concerned, the everybody back in the house by them makes me wonder he wants to make it known that he found Stuart by the pool or in the pool dead, not anybody else because three of them claim to have found him and that all their reports differ. So there are contradictions between their police statements regarding who actually found Stuart's dead body in the pool. But Barrymore wants everybody to know that everybody was back in the house by them and clearly he found Stuart. He was the one that found Stuart. So this is quite an, an odd, long statement that I detect deception throughout. The fact that the jacuzzi keeps being mentioned makes me wonder if that is where Stuart died. Perhaps his body was thrown into the pool. Again, I'm just making assumptions. I'm not making any accusations. These are just my theories. And as always, guys, I don't mean anyone any harm. The last time I saw Stuart, I was walking towards the jacuzzi. <laughs> Stuart Lubbock joined John Kenny and Justin Merritt in the outside jacuzzi. Kenny and Merritt went back to the house. Shortly afterwards, another guest, James Footers, saw Stuart swimming alone in the pool next to the jacuzzi. So what happened next that raised the alarm? Can you just take me through the sequence of events? Uh, we had the smoke down there. Uh, we were there for a while. Not that long. Um, we agreed we'd go to the jacuzzi, give it a go. Uh, went down to the, the corner end of the house. Uh, I gave them some shorts, they changed, I changed into a pair of shorts. Walked out to the pool towards the jacuzzi, everybody was back in the house by then. And then I looked down. Uh, which is effectively the deep end, and, and Stuart was there. Now, something to note about Barry Moore's body language throughout this interview, when he's asked the more difficult questions by Bashir, he's often looking around a lot, up and around and to the left and to the right, sometimes down. I think when he's recalling memory, he sort of looks left and sometimes right. When he's looking down, I feel he's being deceitful. Just my opinion, guys. It's hard to judge the rest of his body language because you can't see much from his head down, so it's mostly facial body language. But from some of the shooting, dirty, evil looks that he gives Bashir, you can tell at points that he's really not happy, he's not comfortable, he's anxious, he's quite nervous throughout the interview. And clearly, once Bashir gets the better of him, his nerves start to get the better of him and he starts to sort of not give the best answers and deception starts to come out like a big red flag. What happened next that raised the alarm? Can you just take me through the sequence of events? Uh, we had the smoke down there. Uh, we were there for a while, not that long. Um, we agreed we'd go to the jacuzzi, give it a go. Uh, went down to the the corner end of the house. Uh, I gave them some shorts, they changed, I changed into a pair of shorts. Walked out to the pool towards the jacuzzi, everybody was back in the house by then. And then I looked down, uh, which was effectively the deep end, and, and Stuart was there. So the next question that Bashir asks Barry Moore is, did you realise who it was? As in, did you realise who the dead person floating in your swimming pool in your back garden was? He says, and before he says, so make a point to check this while you watch this part of the video, he sort of looks up, he looks left and right again, he pauses, he doesn't answer immediately, which is a bit strange, and he says, um, not, well, I did, yeah, it was face up, yeah. It was face up. Stuart was face up. It was Stuart Lubbock. You knew it was Stuart Lubbock. So from the initial answer there, and he does give another response shortly after, but from that initial response, I believe he knew it was Stuart Lubbock, but he didn't want to say it was Stuart Lubbock. There's some kind of distancing going on there with his language. Really weird. And another red flag fly him for Barry Moore here, because I think he's trying to make it seem like at first he didn't realise it was Stuart, but he knew from the minute he saw him that it was Stuart Lubbock that was dead in his pool, in my opinion. Did you realise who it was? Um, not immediately. Yeah, well, I did, yeah, it was face up, yeah. 
So again, just to go back over that question, it was, did you realise who it was, as in who's dead in your swimming pool? Um, no. Well, I did, yeah. It was face up. Yeah. So the next question that Bashir asks Barrymore here is, what did you do? And Barrymore says, I just freaked out. I ran back in and got, uh, Jonathan, who I know is a lifesaver. And, uh, uh... And Simon and James jumped in and pulled his body out. And when he finishes saying body out, he purses his lips quite noticeably, which often when people are telling lies and trying to withhold information, they purse their lips. It's a sort of instinctive thing that a lot of humans don't realise that they do. And it's some sort of coping mechanism to stop the information coming out that you're trying to keep in. And it's also a way of sort of giving yourself a bit more time to think, pursing your lips. What else is my next lie that's going to come flying out of my mouth? And it's to stop anything flying out of your mouth that you don't want to. So it's quite interesting to note the body language here that his lips are pursed at the end. But just to go back through that, what did you do? I just freaked out. I ran in and got, uh, Jonathan, who I know is a lifesaver. Uh, and, uh, and Simon and James jumped in and pulled his body out. So there's quite a lot of filler words here, a lot of ers and ums. I just freaked out. I don't know why I need to use the word just. You, I freaked out. I completely freaked out. Not just. Again, a bit of a filler word. Red flag there. Um, and it's just the pursed lips. A lot, all the ums and ers. And I suppose he's been asked what he was doing here, but it's not the best answer. And it's not really very truthful, in my opinion. So Bashir then asks Barrymore, did you call the police? To which Barrymore shakes his head and says, no. Now I detect he's not being dece deceitful there. I detect that is truth. As we all know, it was Justin Merritt that called the police. It wasn't Barrymore. What did you do? I just freaked out. I ran back in and got uh, Jonathan. Well, I was a, a lifesaver. And... Um, Simon and James jumped in and pulled his body out. Did you call the police? No. So Bashir then says, why not? As in, why did you not call the police? Barrymore says, because someone was doing it. Bashir says, Justin Merritt says he calls the 999. Barrymore says, yeah, he called. Well, Justin and Jonathan came out to the body. Bashir says, what did you do next? So going back through that, he's basically quite blasé when he says about not ringing 999. It was his house. It was his party. A lot of people have always wondered, why did Barrymore not make that call himself? Why did Justin Merritt do it? Was it because he was in such a state? He doesn't say that. He doesn't say I was in such a state. I wasn't in a fit state to make the call. He just says someone else was dealing with it. You know, I'm above that. Me and my big celebrity status couldn't possibly make the call. And he, he knew it wouldn't look great if he made the call himself. So... I think that's why he didn't make the call, in my opinion. But that's very interesting to hear, you know, he clearly didn't want to make the call, but he wasn't that bothered about making the call because someone else was doing it. Did you call the police? No. Why not? Because somebody was doing it. Justin Merritt says he called the... he called 999. Yeah, I called... well, Justin and... Um... Justin and Jonathan came out to the body. So Bashir then asks Barrymore, what did you do next? And Barrymore says, I was standing on the other side and I just lost it, just panicked. I didn't know what to do. I just couldn't believe what was going on. Bashir says next, so what did you think as you looked? Barrymore says, he's been under the water for a while from the way he was. But that made you panic? Bashir says. So just to quickly go back through these ones. So this one. What did you do next? I was standing on the other side and I just lost it. I just panicked. I didn't know what to do. I just couldn't believe what was going on. So he was asked what he did next. He wasn't asked where he was stood. So the fact that he starts with, I was just standing on the other side, which must mean, in my opinion, on the other side of the pool or the other side of the jacuzzi. Why does he even need to say that? There's not really any need to say that. I find that quite strange that he feels the need to say where he was. So what, he wasn't by the body when all this was going on. The life-saving attempt that perhaps Jonathan Kenny made on Stuart's body, which was obviously perhaps dead at this point and unsavable. He wants them to know 
or to Bashir and the rest of the world to know he wasn't near the body, he was on the other side. He just lost it. He just panicked. I didn't know what to do. I just couldn't believe what was going on. So there's just panicked, not I panicked. I totally panicked. It's just panicked. I just couldn't believe what was going on. So again, emphasising, overemphasising with the word just. Again, red flags are flying. And to be honest, I'm not sure why he's included all this information. It's a bit of storytelling. Trying to get Bashir on side. But as we can all see, that's clearly not working. What did you do next? I was standing on the other side and I, would, I just, just lost it. I just panicked. I didn't know what to do. I was just, I couldn't believe what was going on. So Bashir's next question to Barrymore is, but that made you panic? And Barrymore says, well, panic? Well, when I say panic, I just like freaking out. And uh, seeing him, and he pauses here, under there, and it just seemed that their efforts to do anything wasn't coming round. What did you do next? I was standing on the other side and I, was, I just just lost it. I just panicked. I didn't know what to do. I was just, I couldn't believe what was going on. So what did you think as you looked at he's been under the water a while. On the way he was. But that made you panic? Not panic when I said panic. I just like... I'm freaking out at, at, at seeing him under there and it just seemed that the, their efforts to do anything, it wasn't coming round. So going back over that last question, Barry Morris asks, so do you think that was the most responsible behaviour? And he gives a short answer here because he doesn't like being asked this question. No, that's it. That's all you get. And no, it wasn't responsible behaviour. <laughs> Bashir then asks, I mean, he is a total stranger who's clearly injured some way in the pool and you leave the house and he almost looks like and you leave the house he looks quite perplexed when he asks barrymore the question and barrymore just goes yep or yep again one word answer not happy to be asked this hasn't got much more to say and then you get another one out of bashir another question it's almost tantamount to a criminal offense isn't it like leaving the scene of an accident again barrymore doesn't look very happy to be asked this and again He's not really feeling the interview with Bashir and he knows Bashir's getting the better of him and the questions are getting ever harder for him. I didn't do anything at that point. Simon and uh, James had come down to a getaway. There's nothing you can do um, and, and leave the place because, you know, it's got to be swarming with uh, police and, and press. And I just went along with that. So you're saying that it was suggested to you that you should get out of the house? Yes. Do you think that was the most responsible behaviour? No. I mean, he is a total stranger who's clearly injured in some way in the pool and you leave the house? Yeah. It's almost tantamount to a criminal offence, isn't it? Like leaving the scene of an accident. So Barrymore doesn't respond initially to the last question, which was from Bashir. It's almost tantamount to a criminal offence, isn't it? Like leaving the scene of an accident. Uh, Barrymore doesn't respond, but just sort of looks around and up and says nothing. So Bashir pushes him and says, can you see? Barrymore does finally respond and says, it's only tantamount to that. If you're leaving the scene of an accident, if you, you caused it. I didn't know. I don't. I, I didn't think about what I was doing. I didn't think what was right or wrong. They ushered me away and said there's nothing more that you can do. So just to go back to this, again, previous questions that has been asked to Barrymore by Bashir, he gives really long-winded answers. But when asked, you know, why didn't you act? Why did you leave the house? He doesn't want to say a lot to it. We're getting one word answers here. You know, can you see? And then he gives this big long one because he's been pushed on it. But what's interesting here is it's only tantamount to that if you're leaving the scene of the accident, if you caused it. So he's basically denying that he caused it, almost insinuating that he knows who did, but that, not that he's ever let on. So that's strange. I didn't know. I don't. I I didn't think about what I was doing. Well, here we've got lots of stuttering. Is he didn't, he is and he don't. Is he didn't, don't know. 
So again, not flowing very well, the English here. If you were telling the truth and not stalling for time to think of your next lie, this should come out a lot more clearly and shouldn't look and read and sound as strange as it does. Do you think that was the most responsible behaviour? No. I mean, he is a total stranger who's clearly injured in some way in the pool and you leave the house. Yeah. It's almost tantamount to a criminal offence, isn't it? Like leaving the scene of an accident. Can, can you see? It's only tantamount to that if you're leaving the scene of the accident, if you've caused it. I didn't... I, 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 I didn't think about what I was doing. I didn't think what was right or wrong. So Barrymore carries on with that quite long-winded statement in answer to... Bashir's last question and the next bit is you know I said I want to do something and they said it will be a nightmare just go out and I didn't leave without straight away ringing my manager Mike and telling him where I was I wasn't running away from the scene if I was running away from the scene the police would have been able to find me straight away so quite strange, he's always maintained he didn't flee the scene and he's quite sensitive about that because he was asked about that in an interview with Piers Morgan where he snapped and got quite offensive with Piers Morgan and you could see Piers was visibly shocked by Barry Moore's response. So he doesn't like being accused that he fled the scene. It was obviously his house, his party that he'd invited Stuart Lubbock back to sort of his responsibility for the people, the guests at his house, in, in my opinion, and obviously in Bashir's opinion. So he's very sensitive over that. And this is all just too much information. We don't need all this here. You know, this bit at the end, if I was running away from the scene, the police would have been able to find me straight away. So in other words, you know, if I hadn't have told my manager where I was going, the police wouldn't have known where I was. And I did tell my manager, so I'm completely innocent of any guilt here. Again, just more bullshit from Barry Moore. Storytelling. No one asked whether he called his manager. It's a bit weird. And again, red flags flying for me that I detect deception, storytelling, trying to distract Bashir from what he's really asking and not really giving a, a, a definite answer and just giving way too much information than is actually needed, which is a red flag. It's almost tantamount to a criminal offence, isn't it? Like leaving the scene of an accident. Can, can you see? It's, it's only tantamount to that if you're leaving the scene of the accident, if you've caused it. I didn't... I, 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 I didn't think about what I was doing. I didn't think what was right or wrong. They asked me about it. said, there's nothing you can do. You know, I said, I want to, you know, do something. But they said, you, you know, it'd be a nightmare. And I just... So Bashir then asks Barry Moore... Just going back over the scene, your your friends suggest that you can't be of any help. There's been this terrible incident. You don't really know what's happened, to be honest. Barry Moore goes, mm-hmm, at this point. You don't know the individual concerned. But something happened, and you're anxious about it. Your friends say to you, some people might accuse you of running away from your responsibilities. It's your house. At this point, Barry Moore responds and goes, yep. And you've invited people to your party. And, and, and I didn't leave without straight away ringing my PA mic and telling him where I was. I wasn't running away from the scene. If I was running away from the scene, the police wouldn't have been able to find me straight away. Just going back over, over the scene, your, your, your friends suggest that you can't be of any help. There's been this terrible incident. You don't really know what's happened, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You don't know the individual concern, but something's happened and, and you're anxious about it. Your friends say to you, some people might accuse you of running away from your responsibilities. It's your house yeah. and you've invited people to your party. And the next bit of the question is, do you accept that's what it was that you were entirely responsible? Bashir asks Barrymore. Barrymore responds with quite a short statement. I was irresponsible at the time. As in, I'm not irresponsible anymore now. I'm a very responsible citizen, but I was irresponsible at the time. That's what he's trying to get across there. Barrymore, sorry, Bashir then asks Barrymore, just to leave the house? As in, you were irresponsible at the time, just to leave the house? And Barrymore responds with, I didn't think. 
I'm guilty of not thinking. So in other words, I'm not guilty of Stuart Lubbock's murder, his sexual assault or anything that happened in my house that night. But I'm just guilty of not thinking, not thinking straight, not calling the police and generally doing one when all the shit hit the fan. Just going back over over the scene, your, your, your friends suggest that you can't be of any help. There's been this terrible incident. You don't really know what's happened, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You don't know the individual concern, but something's happened and, and you're anxious about it. Your friends say to you, some people might accuse you of running away from your responsibilities. It's your house. Yeah. And you've invited people to your party. Do you accept that that's what, that's what it was, that you were entirely irresponsible? I was irresponsible at the time. Just to leave the house? I didn't think. I'm guilty of not thinking. Now, after Barrymore says he was guilty of not thinking, Bashir responds with one word, and that's just, again? Sort of question mark at the end. Again? Guilty of not thinking? Again? Barrymore then says, again, I didn't think. I went along with somebody else, suggesting what I do. What I should have done is stay there, sorted things out. But I was in no state. I was in no state to, 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 that's four twos. But I was in no state to, 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 to take control. I just couldn't believe what had happened. Well, I'm sure everyone listening now must think the worst bit about this last statement is the two, 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 two. Not many people repeat the word two, T-O, four times. That's really weird. So when asked again by Bashi, you didn't think? Again, I didn't think. So he's getting it across. I didn't think. I wasn't thinking. I went along with somebody else suggesting what I do. What I should have done is stay there, sorted things out. So again, this first bit isn't so bad. Um, but it's the last bit. But I was in no state. I was in no state to, 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 to take control. I just couldn't believe what had happened. So personally, I don't think Barry Moore initially was going to say I was in no state to take control. He was going to say something else other than take control. And that's why we get a two, 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 two. We get four lots of twos because he can't think, shit, what am I going to say next? And take control was not what he was going to say next because he clearly wasn't going to take control of the situation. He fled the scene. He left it for Justin Merritt to call the, the ambulance and call 999 to report the dead person in the pool. Paul Stuart Lubbock's tragic death, report that to the emergency services and get them out. He didn't take control. He was never going to take control. And he's entered that into the statement. It's a clear lie. It wasn't what he was initially going to say, which is why I think he stutters over the 2222. Two, two, two. He was obviously going to say something else, maybe make the phone call to 999, but certainly not take control. So I detect deception again in this statement. And I'm sorry to say, another red flag for Barrymore. Do you accept that that's what? That's what it was, that you were entirely irresponsible. I was irresponsible at the time. Just to leave the house? I didn't think. I'm guilty of not thinking. Again? Again, I didn't think. I didn't think. I, I went along with somebody else suggesting what I do. What I should have done is stay down, sorted things out. I was in no state. I was in no state to, 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 to take control. I just couldn't believe what had happened. The last bit of the interview is coming up and it's quite interesting because Bashir gets very pointy with Barrymore. And the next question from Bashir is, you invited people to your house, and he points to give it more emphasis when he says it. You invited people to your house. It was your party. And when something terrible is happening in front of your eyes, even though it was suggested by other people, you leave your house. That is not responsible behaviour. And Barrymore looks visibly shocked by this statement because it's quite a power statement from Bashir with all the pointing, getting his point across to Barrymore. Barrymore looks quite dumbfounded and doesn't initially speak instantly. He obviously needs time to think. And to that, he says, no, it's not at all, as in it's not responsible. No, it's not at all. It's totally irresponsible. And I, I have, I got to live with it. I got to live with that. Sorry. So let me read that bit again. The last bit of the question from Bashir is, that is not responsible behaviour. No, it's not at all. It's totally irresponsible. And I, I have, I got to live with that. 
Bashir responds with two words at the end, you do. And Barrymore nods and goes, yeah. And that's the end of the interview. So you invited people to your house. It was your party. And when something terrible is happening in front of your eyes, even though it was suggested to you by other people, you leave your house. That is not responsible behaviour. No, it's not at all. It's totally irresponsible. And I, I have to, I've got to live with that. You do? Yeah. It's a very interesting interview to analyse because it was filmed not long after the tragic death of Stuart Lubbock. Subsequent interviews with Piers Morgan, filmed five, six years ago. He's lost his memory to some degree. It's 15 years have passed, perhaps, when those interviews were filmed with um, GMTV and with Piers Morgan. Memories have faded. This interview with Bashir was done not long after the murder of Stuart Lubbock in March 2001. You can see that he's still be able to recall the events of the night. He's still got it all quite fresh in his mind. But because of that, because it's all fresh in his mind, if he was truth-telling throughout the interview, it would have flowed. There wouldn't have been all these erms, ah, mm, and then the two, 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 two. All the, you know, stuttering over I, that happens as well. You should never stutter over I. We all say the pronoun I every day. We shouldn't stutter over it. And when you do notice someone stuttering over it, often it's a politician or a high-up person in society. They're bullshitting people, lying, and they stutter over I because they're trying to think of the next thing to say often they were going to say something like Barrymore does at one point in the interview and he has to think again because he wasn't going to take control and the 222 two, two, take control it was obviously two something else and he had to think and think crap I can't say that I'll say take control so throughout this interview I feel that Barrymore lies he's deceptive he's keeping things in I'm not making any accusations here as always guys I don't know what involvement Barrymore had who could say he may know who carried out the murder. I suspect he does. I'm not saying I think he was involved. He may have been. I believe more than one person carried out the murder, but obviously we don't know who it was, and I don't wish to make any accusations and be sued, <laughs> obviously. Anyway, recently in the UK, it has come to light in the last couple of days this week here that everybody that was there that night, all of the eight people, including Barrymore, have recently been spoken to again by the police. Now, this brings to light more information about the investigation, which is still ongoing, into the 50-year-old man that was arrested and is still pending investigation. He was arrested a couple of months ago here in the UK. So we're all waiting for news. We're all wondering, could a court case come later in the year? Could an arrest finally result in someone going to prison here in England? Could Stuart Lubbock finally get justice for his savage murder? And could Stuart Lubbock's poor dad, Terry, who is now terminally ill and, and most likely to pass away in the next couple of months, could he possibly get justice for his son before he dies? I really hope so, guys, because this is a tragic case. It's always caught my attention since it happened 20 years ago because it was Barrymore, because he was such a big celebrity in this country. It really does fascinate people that such a weird, tragic event could happen at a party at his house. I do wonder if the case will ever be solved. I truly hope that it will. And like I said, I really hope that later this year a court case may happen and whoever is or was, if it's more than one person, responsible for killing Stuart Lubbock will finally be put inside in prison where they belong. So as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. If you're liking my content and you haven't already subscribed, please like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support. Please put your comments down below about this. Do you detect deception? Do you think Barrymore's lying? What do you think his possible involvement might be? Do you have any new theories or facts on the case that I'm not aware of that you can make me aware of? I really appreciate people giving me new information and I always appreciate knowing your thoughts and views. So like I said, put your comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. It may sometimes take me a few days or a week to get back to you because I do work full time as, as well as doing my YouTube channel, but I will always get back to you as quickly as I can. Anyway, guys, it's been great talking to you all again. I hope you're all keeping well and staying safe, and I'll be back very soon with more true crime videos. Take care for now, and thanks for watching. Bye, guys.